Hello. So today is Saturday, um, January 16th, 2021. And I'm in my car right now. I'm getting prepared to head to Mass General Hospital. Um, the day after Thanksgiving, I was diagnosed with um, esophagus cancer. And um, what had happened is, is I went for a routine um, endoscopy. And um, because I have an underlying condition called Barrett's esophagus, I'm more prone to esophagus cancer, so I have regular screenings. I went for the endoscopy, and um, they removed a node that was cancerous. Um, they told me what type of cancer it is. Um, they assured me that the tissue around the node that was removed was um, good, looked good, but they're going to be, this is a super aggressive type of cancer, so they're going to be super aggressive treating me. So my primary care physician is in Dartmouth-Hitchcock um, Medical Center up in Nashua, and my primary care physician is in Hudson. And the um, gastroenterologist called me the day after Thanksgiving at 5.30, called me like three times. And uh, finally we connected, and he told me that, you know, what the diagnosis was and what the, you know, the, the node that was removed and, and things like that and the tissue around the node. Um, so, I mean, it knocked me off my feet, I'm not going to lie. Um, and I understand that this is um, caught very early, so I'm in good shape there. Um, but he did say that they were going to treat it um, quickly, and there were going to be some other things that were going to be happening. Um, so he said that he put in urgent uh, referrals for uh, oncology and hematology and a thoracic surgeon and um, to have um, a gastroenterologist in their main hospital up in Lebanon, New Hampshire, do another endoscopy which was called a heat ablation um, treatment where they go in and use a camera to burn the tissue around where they remove that cancerous node and then um, you know that tissue will grow back and form back from my body so I get that diagnosis and the following week I went to work and I was well I knocked off my feet but uh, the phone call started coming in from uh, the doctor and the doctor's offices and I had an appointment set up in Nashua I had an appointment set up uh, in Manchester um, and then I was waiting for Lebanon to call me to make that appointment and um, literally we couldn't connect they tried calling me uh, to make the appointment and I, we just couldn't connect and I'm not gonna lie my my um, frustration and emotion got the best of me and um, I got super frustrated with the whole process and uh, then I realized what was happening I realized that I was giving nothing to the Lord I was doing everything in my own strength I was doing making appointments in my own strength. I wasn't consulting him in prayer. I wasn't uh, sitting still and waiting for him to speak to me through the Holy Spirit. I was just doing what I wanted to do and listening to what other people told me they wanted me to do. So having said that, I canceled all the appointments. And I said, um, you know, I told Bonnie, I said, I'm going to go to a season of fasting and prayer and let the Lord lead me to where he needs to lead me to be treated. I don't know where it is or how it is, but it will happen. And, uh, I just sat quietly and, and did my thing, and eventually uh, I was at work one day, and it come upon me after lunch and prayer, and it just come upon me to just Google Barrett's esophagus cancer Boston. So I Googled it, up came Mass General Hospital. Uh, Barrett's esophagus has uh, a whole um, division of Mass General Hospital to treat this type of, of um, illness, and um, I started looking into it. You had to make an appointment. Um, through the website, uh, then I needed referrals, things like that, and just super frustrating things. But I said, let's start at square one, let the Lord lead me. I believe he's led me here, filled out the online form. I got a call, um, got the referrals, uh, they sent them down to Mass General. Um, and then they scheduled an appointment, um, a teleconference with me, with the doctor, and he would let me know if he was able to treat me, if they would take my case. I spoke to him on January 7th, and... Um, he was, he was awesome, Dr. Singh. And he told me exactly what to expect. He told me exactly what they were going to do. And he told exactly how they were going to treat me. So I exhaled completely because I'm at Mass General. I'm in the best place I can be possibly for a situation like this. So today's the first day. I'm going down. I'm going to have three scans. I'm going to have a scan of my head, chest, and, and uh, hip area, I guess abdomen. Uh, we're going to do CAT scans with contrast uh, to see if there's any cancer in any of my organs and things like that. Um, being Christian and being faithful, I had to consult God's Word. I had to sit still, let the Lord speak to me through the Spirit, um, understand, you know, a couple of things. Number one, my body, 
my physical body isn't saved. So cancer and disease and things like that is going to come upon this physical body. And it's going to be up to the Lord through his will um, that I'm healed from this. And it'll be up to him through his will as to what's going to happen next. But I have to totally release everything into his hands. Because if I don't and I continue to try to do it myself, I'm just going to make a mess of everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to scripture and um, you find scripture about certain things. You find scripture about certain situations. And what came upon my heart was simply Psalm 23. And I'll read it. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. <clears throat> I will not be in need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me into the paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Now, I'm going to just pick that apart a little bit. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, I'm led by my Savior, Jesus Christ. I confess him as my Savior in prayer. I confess him daily to the Father as to who he is and what he is to me and to how I propose to lead my life in Christ. I don't try to be like Christ. I don't try to be like Jesus um, because if Jesus is living in and through me, uh, through the Holy Spirit, then I'm transformed and I have a new way and things like that. So that's my way. That's the way I understand it to be. But the Lord is my shepherd. So yes, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yes, I will not be in need. He meets all my needs. It's said over and over in Scripture that he'll meet every need according to his will. So what we don't want to do is say according to my will and just... I will not be in need doesn't mean things aren't going to happen. Okay? And the reason is is that not having a need means that because I'm in Christ that that's everything is met. There's nothing that I need. So that's the way I take that. Um, he lets me lie down in green pastures. He doesn't tell me to lie down. He lets me lie down if I allow myself through the spirit through my flesh to be led by him. He lets me lie down. And he leads me besides quiet waters. The quiet waters of Jesus Christ. The quiet peace of the Lord. So he leads me and he lets me. It doesn't say that he makes me. He says he leads me and lets me. And then he restores my soul. When we're quiet with the Lord and we're contemplating big decisions and things and we go into prayer and we seek his counsel through the wisdom and discernment of his word and through the spirit, um, he'll restore our soul. He'll put the peace of that surpasses all understanding into our heart and we'll sit in that peace and wait. And then he'll guide me in the paths of righteousness. He doesn't say he's going to make me in the paths of righteousness. He's not going to pull me tugging and screaming. He's going to guide me. Now whether in Matthew, Jesus says the way is narrow. The gate is narrow. The way to follow Jesus is a narrow path. So he'll guide me into that path of righteousness in the narrow way. Now this is the big one. And, and to me, this is the most important part. For the sake of his name. Not the sake of my name. Everything that God does is to his glory, not to mine. He'll work in and through me, through the Holy Spirit, for his glory, not for me. I have to understand, the Bible is not about me. It's not about my greatness it's not about my my wars it's about the foretelling and then the coming of jesus christ our lord and savior the messiah that's what the bible is all about so if i make the bible about me i'm going to be sorely disappointed because i'm not so great so the only other thing the only other um scripture that came on to me and to, to hear and to listen to was in romans and we know that all things God's work for, the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I say over and over, I believe that through foster care and adoption, I've been called as a good steward over serenity. So have I been called for his plan and purpose and to glorify his name and to testify to how good he is? Absolutely. So I believe that I've been called into his presence to glorify his name so that he can work in and through me so that people will know that they see the way things get done. So knowing that scripture's in front of me, knowing that this situation's in front of me, I'm going to hand it to the Lord. 
I'm going to hand it to him and let him have his way with it. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I'm going to be peaceful with it. So what I'm not going to do is try to fight everything that comes along. I'm not going to try to make everything about me and do things all my way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sort of a video blog. I'm going to, hopefully if this encourages someone who's been diagnosed with cancer, this is not about me saying, look at me, I'm doing this and that. This is about God the Father working in and through me to his glory as to my situation in particular. This is my situation that I'm going to document as we go along. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just have a prayer for myself as I leave my driveway and head into Boston and get settled in my heart as I drive along and just let his presence come around me, come behind me, come in front of me, and come next to me so that I know I'm not walking into Mass General alone. I truly believe I know that I'm not alone. Even though I'm driving alone, I might be alone in the flesh, the Spirit is with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and for your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this time to drive into Boston. We thank you for your hand of protection over me as I drive into Boston, Father, as I arrive there for this treatment. I pray, Father, that it not be for me. I pray, Father, that if you, by your will, by my testimony, have me glorify your name today. Father, I pray that that's what my prayer be. I pray, Father, that I come into contact with anyone else who has cancer today, Father, that they see the light shining through me to your glory so that they'll know who I am and who I belong to. Father, if it be your will, then it is mine as I drive in. This situation is in your hands. It'll stay in your hands because I know in the end it'll be to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.